Although there are many theories to how this conflict started, many argue that it is historically rooted to the conflict known as La Violencia, a civil conflict between the Colombian Liberal Party and the Colombian Conservative Party. It lasted between 1948 and 1958 and was triggered by the 1948 assassination of the populist political leader Jorge Eliezer Gaitán. In order to cease the civil conflict, troops were sent to peasant communities by the United States. But the liberal and communist groups of Colombia reorganized into FARC, the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia. It was not until the early 1980s that the groups involved in the Colombian armed conflict started drug trafficking to maintain both economic stability and power. Drug trafficking is what keeps the Colombian armed conflict from ceasing. The Colombian armed conflict does not show any signs of ending. In the last few years, thousands have died and conflicts continue. Major events fuel the problem, such as kidnapping, deaths, and drug trafficking. In August 2010, Juan Manuel Santos was elected as president, and he said that he would continue the armed offensive against the rebel, rebel movement. In that year, FARC's second in command, Mono Popoy, was killed, as well as 50 policemen and soldiers. In 2011, the rebel group shifted from guerrilla warfare to a war of militias. Now they are operating more in the civilization of Colombia and is using as a cover. Poverty and inequality are two of the many effects that the Colombian population is forced to undergo. Also, they must live with relations between the armed groups and illegal activities, of which drug production, trafficking, exhaustion, and abduction. In 2010, the conflict intensified in sectors affecting children, in particular those of African and Aboriginal origins. The continuous displacement of people is another impact on the conflict of society. According to official government information, 61,074 individuals were internally relocated on September 2010 of which 30,488 children. The presence of massacres and killings was frequent throughout the year, which included that of children, who the government believed were involved in criminal gangs. Between January and November 2010, 10 massacres were reported. Between the victims were 9, 13 to 17 year old children. The use of children in the conflict by armed groups is constantly present. In 2010, there were victims of attacks from the armed groups. Landmines served as a further obstacle. Between January and November 2010, 18 children were injured by the mines. It has been verified that 11 were killed during the same period of time in two of the departments. The same year, several executions involving children took place regardless of the government's policy against human rights violations. Sexual violence is rarely reported, although quite common, including children as young as two years old. Separately, the Inter-Institutional Committee for Justice and Peace has reported 677 cases of gender-based violence between 2006 and 2010. In addition, National security forces have been positioned near schools, augmenting the risk of attacks by armed groups who have been reported to occupy schools and putting the lives of many children in danger. Populations were not allowed to enter certain areas due to armed confrontation between several groups. This caused limited access to basic services, schools, food, and medical care. There are two major groups in the Colombian armed conflict. There are the governments, and their military, and there are rebel groups or guerrillas. The Colombian and American governments are trying to fight and stop the guerrilla groups that contain the major groups of FARC, ELN, M19, EPL, MOEC, CGSB, ERC, GRA, IRAFP, and the drug cartels. The Colombian government's main goal is to stop the rebel movement and regain control in Colombia. The American government has also taken part in fighting these rebel groups since the war's beginning and has spent $3 billion in Colombia. Colombia is the country with third most health of the USA with 400 military personnel in Colombia. There are many guerrillas throughout Colombia. 
but the largest, oldest, and most important one being FARC, the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia. FARC originated during La Violencia, a time between 1948 and 1958, leaving over 200,000 people dead. The conflict was between the liberal and communist parties of Colombia, and a communist group of people fled from the countryside where the wars were largest. This group turned into the rebel group FARC, and to this day, they fight for communism and, as InsightCrime.org writes, operate in different regions of the country, mainly in search for financial sources to fight their 40-year-old war against the government and maintain their army.